Hello everyone, <clears throat> thank you for having me here today, thank, thank you a lot for the organization. I spent almost one week here in Tenerife, I was part of the Urban Waste kickoff meeting actually, and it's a very nice island you've got, and I was very pleased to meet many people really invested in uh, improving waste management, so it's all very positive. And today I'm going to talk about waste monitoring because I'm working for an observatory, and um, Indicators data, that's something we take for granted uh, usually, but it's a bit more complicated to get them right. And I'm just giving uh, several examples of what we are doing, how we do that, and what we are thinking about doing to improve everything. So just a few words about the Paris region. Uh, I guess you know Paris, or what it is about, but the Paris region is a bit bigger than Paris. It encompasses Paris and uh, several other cities. It's, uh, so you can see it on the map, it's 12 million inhabitants, and half of them are uh, located in the very dense center in a very small area, so we've got a huge density and uh, many challenges to organize waste management. And I'm working for the observatory, so we call it the Paris Region Waste Observatory, or DIF uh, in French. And we are an association, actually, so uh, our specificity that we, we were funded by the state and the region 20 years ago, but we our status is an association, so all our members are actually a waste stakeholder, regional waste stakeholder, which is, uh, I'll explain to you later what it is important. And we are doing three main actions. The first one is just waste monitoring, uh, like tracking on waste, knowing where it go it's going, how much it costs. We disseminate information about what everybody is doing in the region, and something very important is to bring together all the waste stakeholders during conferences, during working groups, so that despite the fact that they don't necessarily share the same views, uh, we want them to talk to each other to, to find some common uh, solutions. So what's waste monitoring? Uh, the easy part of waste monitoring is just focusing on waste management activities, so how much you collect, where it's going, uh, how much you sort, uh, the capacities of treatment units, if they recover something, uh, and how much it costs, the impact on the environment. There's also a part about monitoring the strategies in itself. It can be a very practical. Uh, how, how do you collect waste? Is it door-to-door? -door? Is it spring banks? the civic community sites when it opens, stuff like that. The legal framework can be interesting also to, to know. Economic instruments, uh, like we've seen uh, the importance of economic instruments with the Francesca presentation, and uh, it has a big impact on, on waste and also communication activities. And waste management and waste arising are also depending on external factors such as uh, where the people are living. You won't manage your waste the same way in vertical housing or in individualized houses. Um, consumption patterns change quite uh, a lot depending on where people are living. All the weather conditions, touristic activities are all some factors that we don't really um, we don't really control, but that will affect waste management. And the difficult part of monitoring everything is actually link uh, the impact of strategies and the impact on external factors on, on the waste activities. That's something we are trying to do. Uh, the difficulty is that there's lots of factors actually to take into account. And uh, what you're trying to do is to set every, to put everything in a database to have more uh, integrated uh, statistical analysis and, and try to find out if or we can uh, assess the impact of those various factors. Um, so, the observatory, how to monitor waste, you have to get into consideration the people who has waste, so waste data holder, uh, can be local authorities, waste companies, DP organization like Ecombes in, in Spain, the waste producers also, they know how much they produce, uh, all the recycling, sometimes NGOs, and the goal of the observatory is just to get these people, to give them their data, and there are uh, several ways we are doing that. First one is the mandatory reporting with collection and treatment permits. Usually uh, the authorities asked, uh, ask waste operators to report every year. Um, it's not the data we like the most because since it's an obligation, people do it reluctantly, and we are not always sure about um, 
uh, about the, the fiability and, and we don't get the data we actually exactly want because it's difficult to change all the reporting process. What we do a lot is participative surveys, so sending uh, questionnaires to local authorities, waste companies. Uh, this takes some time and resources, but then you get to uh, talk with them and uh, you can ensure that the questions you ask are precisely asked, that they understand it correctly, and you can get some um, first check uh, controls for your data. We also establish convention with our agency, it's not that interesting. So how do you do that? How do you ensure the participation of everyone and how do you ensure to gather the data? Uh, there's no magic formula, but what we are doing is that Instead of having them outside, we broke them inside the observatory and we made everyone having data, parts, members of ORDIF. And uh, oh, we involved them, uh, we involved them uh, with working groups actually. All the, sorry, there's a fly. Uh, all the um, studies we do uh, are um, subjected to a working group that validates the methods, uh, the calculation. Oh, sorry. Um, also, we present to them the results so that they can say, okay, it's correct, you can say that, or maybe uh, it's like the figures are, are wrong. And that's that way you also get, get qualitative explanation about why it has changed into, uh, like why the figures change over, over time. Um, and something very important to get everyone involved is to make this general observation useful to them. So what we do is we try to provide local figures then to the local stakeholders, doing some maps of treatment, uh, uh, treatment units and doing some benchmarking like allowing people to get comparisons with another. So you have to involve them and then you have to show them that it's also useful for them. Several examples on how we present data because uh, it's not just doing database and, and doing a long report nobody reads. So we try to just synthesize those data. We are not really addressing the general public, but we talk to uh, decision makers uh, for who waste management might not be the primary uh, subject of expertise. So we try to really to to take out the most important facts and put them in an appealing way, like with little pictograms. Uh, and this, we got very good feedback from um, non-waste experts that could get an idea of how it works and uh, the main evolutions. Something we also do to present the data is what we call a dashboard. Um, it's basically uh, like 50 page report where we put most of the data we have, and it's kind of the Bible, the Bible for uh, waste, manage, waste data in, in the Paris region, and it's really useful for, for all members because when they go to meeting and discuss their data, they can just put it out and, and, and check, check the figures and everything. Um, so we've been doing that for several years, and we had also very uh, good feedbacks because you get everything you want to, to know about waste management. Something we also do, there's several waste strategies, and uh, about municipal waste, hazardous waste, medical waste, and we monitor uh, the targets. And one interesting uh, illustration to show you uh, how you have to do it, how you can do it, is uh, the, the plan we have actually was voted in 2009, and in 2010 the region came and said, well, so no, we need indicators to monitor the impact of the policy. And for example, we want one for household packaging waste. And so we came with this graph saying it might be a bit more complicated because when you want to calculate a recycling rate, you have a numerator, like the quantities you recycle, and a denominator, which are the total rising. And for the total rising, you actually have several data. The first one is all the quantities put on the market of packaging, uh, which is given by the EPA organization. But actually, it's not actual data because the actual data are the one uh, the number of packaging put on the market with the green dots. And some uh, companies putting packaging on the market don't comply with the regulation, so they don't pay the green dots. So we've got a bit more rising of packaging waste, um, about 5%. So you've got already two choices, and it's, you're talking more or less about the same thing. And then 
the packaging in sorting islands, that the type of packaging we're asking people to sort are not exactly the same because, for example, for packaging, we only have to sort plastic bottles. All the other packaging, uh, plastic packaging, uh, plastic films, they're out of the sorting guidelines. So we can also take those amounts into consideration. So you've got three choices for one given indicator. And, well, if you haven't sorted that this way, then your target is a bit meaningless. So that's the recycled quantities in France and in the region. You can see that we are not that good, actually. So, several um, learning we had for the past few years monitoring waste strategies. The first one is you have to define your indicators when you're setting targets. Uh, you can see with the last example, uh, if you set a target and then you find out that there's three, four, or five different methods to, to calculate, then your target is a bit meaningless because you can really change the figures just by changing the method. Second one is you will always want to set the perfect targets, what you really want, but you have to take into consideration what you know if you can actually monitor what you want. So finding setting targets and finding indicators is always a compromise between what you want and what the data you have, what you can calculate. So when you're setting your objective, you really have to take that into account because at the end of the day, you don't want to have uh, 20 targets and 10 of them, you cannot monitor them because there's no figures. Very important aspect is transparency. And what we did for monitoring the waste strategies is do, we've done lots of what we could uh, indicators catalog where we explain the methods, what's in, what's out. Yeah, okay, I'm finishing very quickly. Um, I'm not really sure people actually read those catalogs, but uh, if you really want to know uh, how, how, how it is calculated, uh, it's important to have that. And then a collaborative approach, because we don't just do monitoring for the sake of monitoring. It's important to analyze the data, understand why we are going into that direction. So having people talk about monitoring is also a way to have them talk about what they're doing, how we could improve the things. So I think that's for, uh, for the main lessons we've learned from monitoring the regional strategies. Now for the outlook, what do we want for the future? Uh, there's a quotation by this guy called Richard Tapia, he's a mathematician, and say we don't know how to measure what we care about, so we care about what we measure, and that's very true for waste management. Uh, what you can say also is that if you don't monitor something, then it doesn't exist to you, and you're not caring about that. So that's, and, and what does it mean for waste management? We are really focused on quantities, actually, because it's easy to monitor quantities. You just put uh, a weighing uh, at the entrance of your treatment site, and you've got your data. And it actually impacts the way we manage waste. Like, we tend to, to, to focus on the very dense fractions, such as paper and, and glass, for example. Um, so I guess in the future we'll have to think a bit more about what we want. Do we want just uh, to improve quantities or do we want to improve uh, greenhouse gases, employment, local development? Um, some, some illustration for that. We've been trying to focus on jobs and we could find some data to assess the number of people needed to treat, collect and treat uh, 10,000 of tons of waste for the different treatment perspectives. So you can see that sending them to landfills, it requires about 15 people, and, and recycling is 42 people. And that does not count actually indirect on um, jobs, such as the people like building the trucks, the people building the, the units, and, and the people benefiting from, from the sorted quantities. So I guess with those indirect jobs, recycling would be even more interesting when you consider jobs. And this is the kind of figure that is really telling to local, uh, to local decision makers. That's something they want more job in their regions. And they're not particularly interested in getting more waste recycling, but more jobs in their territory is something uh, that can be very appealing for them. Another illustration, and then I'm almost done, um, the carbon food impact of food in France. So that's not only food waste, that's all the food chain from uh, the culture to waste management. Something interesting that waste management of food waste is only about 7% of the whole life cycle, meaning that when you address bio waste, when you improve, like when you divert bio waste, from landfills to composting, you only act on the 7%. But when you address food wastage, like you make a campaign for people to 
to waste less food, you actually address all the 100% of those greenhouse gases. So actually avoiding one ton of food uh, has more effect than avoiding five tons, like recycling five tons of bio-waste. I'm not saying we should not recycle bio-waste. I'm just saying that those kind of figures can also uh, give more importance to uh, to prevention, uh, despite the fact that prevention is really um, focusing on little quantities. So that's all kind of new indicators we might want to consider in the future so that we set the priorities uh, in accordance with what we really want and not uh, with only quantities. Two last stuff, if you're interested in uh, monitoring observatory, uh, or good friends from ACR Plus are, are doing what we, they call the observatory of municipal waste performances. So they're trying to benchmark common uh, territories such as like capital cities have done something like that. They might want to do something about Ireland, I guess, because it's really specific. And then if you want some comparison, you need to, to get to other countries. And they've got many technical reports, so I just, uh, uh, you can check their website and, and get there. Another thing I want to talk is this project, Reasons for Recycling, that I managed uh, during three years. It was a project to improve the comparability of data because when you take pure state data, actually it's not that comparable. And we designed a method uh, based on a common scope for municipal waste and a new indicator called DREC, so destination recycling, that takes into account everything that local authorities sort and send to the recycling sectors. And we could get more consistent data and understand why some are better than the others. And we've got an online tool, I've put the link there, where you can act yourself, like if you're a local authority or a region, you can input your own data according to the method and then benchmark with other territories to see if you're better or, or if you're less good. There's lots of pretty fun indicators. So really, if you want to compare with other territories, that's the place to go. And that's it. Thank you very much for your attention and if you have any questions.